Hi, this is Manos Bilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting section 4.1 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is about uh, choice of access site for performing diagnostic coronary angiography as well as PCI. There are essentially two access sites uh, used for angiography in PCI, either the radial axis or the femoral axis, and each one has advantages and disadvantages. For example, the femoral axis is technically easier to perform, less radiation exposure, and better quality of imaging because of better engagement. Whereas the radial is superior in terms of patient comfort, the patient can get up and walk immediately after, less access site complications and less cost, mainly due to uh, same day discharge. So how to decide whether to go femoral or radial? And this is an approach that uh, highlights several key steps and presupposes that the operator is facile with both radial and femoral. The first step is to determine what are the options, because not everything is an option for every simple, single patient. For example, in patients who had a previous radial artery harvesting for coronary bypass, then radial access is not an option, as, for example, in this patient. And this is why, in patients with previous coronary bypass, it is important to inspect their forearms to see if their radial arteries have been harvested if the bypass graft anatomy is not available. Second, sometimes the arteries can be occluded. Here is an example of a patient who has an occlusion of both uh, the right as well as the left common iliac artery, where clearly in this patient femoral access is not an option unless the CTOs are recanalized, therefore radial access should be used. Here is uh, on radial access, this is a patient with occluded brachial artery on the right, showing from uh, undergrade injection and retrograde injection. Obviously, the right radial is not an option for this patient. Either left radial or femoral should be used. And this is an example for a similar problem, occluded uh, left brachial artery. In this patient, left brachial axis is not an option. Sometimes we don't have an angiogram. However, a CT scan is done. And this is an example of a CT showing occlusion of the distal aorta, uh, distal to the renal artery takeoff. Once again, in this patient, femoral access is not an option and radial access should be performed. Sometimes uh, the arteries are patent, however, there has been a previous catheterization with difficulty engaging. This is an example of arterial lusoria, in which uh, the right subclavian artery is originating from the descending aorta. This is much harder to engage and get good support. So for this patient, should he require another cardiac catheterization using either femoral or, or left radial would be the way to go. This is another example of a patient with uh, extreme iliac tortuosity. Um, should this patient need a cardiac cath again, radial access might be actually preferable, assuming that there is no significant subclavian tortuosity. Another possibility is dialysis sand in the arms, so in dialysis patients, the sand should be identified and access, radial access should not be performed in this arm. And finally, some patients do have a strong preference for going femoral or radial, or some other patients have difficulty lying down flat, for example, those who have back pain or orthopedic problems, or those who are in heart failure, and in such patients, uh, radial access is uh, preferred because it allows them to sit up uh, immediately after the procedure is performed. The next question is whether the patient has previous coronary bypass. And although cardiac cath can be done via radial in previous bypass patients using the left radial, in those patients, femoral, in my opinion, is preferred. The reason is it's much easier to engage the bypass grafts and the natives from the femoral. There's less contrast, less radiation, and also it's easier to engage the grafts and therefore better quality images are, up, are obtained. Now, if radial access is chosen, then the left radial should be used to facilitate engagement of the lima. If right radial is used, then one can actually engage the lima, but it's much more cumbersome and therefore less preferred. The third step is regarding the patient's presentation. Is the patient presenting with STEMI? Is he on high bleeding risk, for example, receiving oral anticoagulation? And in such patients 
who have high bleeding risk, going radial is preferred due to the less likelihood of access side complications. The classic example is oriental coagulation, anemic patients, older patients. So any patient in whom there is concern from bleeding, radial access is preferred. Also, the same thing is true for STEMI, even though Safari STEMI did not show significant difference. But there is uh, more higher use of more aggressive anticoagulation and antiplatelet strategies in such patients. The fourth step is about the complexity of the PCI. And there are many measures of complexity that have to do with the patient's uh, comorbidities, left ventricular systolic function and filling pressures, as well as the complexity of coronary artery disease. So clearly radial can be used to do complex PCI. However, for some especially complex cases, for example, this one with last remaining vessel, femoral access provides advantages in terms of higher support, use of larger guide catheters, and uh, easier to bail out uh, or put hemodynamic support should it be required. Finally, uh, one can start with either radial or femoral, but sometimes the initially chosen strategy fails. This is an example where right radial was obtained, but engaging is extremely challenging due to subclavian tortuosity. In this patient, it makes sense to either go left radial or switch to femoral. This is another example in which uh, performing PCI of a bypass graft was extremely challenging using radial axis. However, it was easily accomplished using femoral axis. This is another example in which um, originally we started from right radial, but the right subclavian is occluded. This was a vasculopath. We tried femoral, but we were unable to get through. Finally, we went left radial, and we are now close to the aorta. However, there is a subclavian lesion at the ostium. We used a, a polymer jacketed wire, a glide wire baby J which eventually made it all the way down to the aortic root, and then we were able to advance our catheters and perform angiography and PCI. So in summary, both radial and femoral are important access options. Each one has its advantages and disadvantages. The operator should be facile with both options, and this is one approach to determine which one to use. First of all, determine if all of them are an option or not, Previous bypass favors femoral, STEMI high bleeding risk favors radial, complex PCI in general favors femoral, and then if either approach fails, switching to the alternate approach is preferred. Thank you.